Which yeah, one? what's going on? Well, lockdown number three. I know. How you been? It, well, that's, I saw you what last January. Is it? Is that the last time we've seen each other? Yeah, do you remember we? I think we met about Costa in Canary Wharf. Canary Wharf. Yeah, I remember. I remember the day, but I didn't know it had been so long. Like, um, yeah. It's been a year, it's been a year, and I can't believe how fast it's gone, and um, I'm just like, you know, it's it's been crazy, man, but how's lockdown treating you? It's all right, like, it is a bit boring, like, I miss going out, I miss life being, like, how it used to be, yeah. but I've been, lately I've been getting a bit more busy than I was, like, there's still, like, some acting stuff going on here and there, not mm. as much as before, obviously, but mm. yeah you know and the radio the radio has been keeping me busy so we're gonna speak about all of that so don't oh, worry God. it's a casual chat if you need to have go and make a cup of tea you can it's fine <laughs> get ready um, get chill out <laughs> yeah no definitely i thought do you know what i need i need to have a catch up with you because i know we've been we've been obviously um on lockdowns and we we always speak i know we keep in touch and stuff but i'm just like um we need to have a proper catch up and I thought why not do it over our podcast do you know what I'm saying people yeah. people can know but this is this is all about you today like I just want to obviously I want you so firstly just introduce yourself to like everyone okay hello guys so my name is Andrea Martinez and I'm an actress also a model makeup artist sometimes and also a radio host as well so I have my own um radio show called Latin Heat and I've got two other hosts with me on the show so it's the three of us and yeah I'm Venezuelan so I'm Latina so yeah I speak Spanish as well amazing I mean I knew all of this but yeah. I thought the people team, <laughs> people got to know me, I'm like you know it's all of this like. <laughs> I know this I thought the people was got to know because it's like you're just ticking off everything on the list now you're doing a lot which we're going to get into yeah um right. I'm going to speak about how we first met as well because we've known each other for a long time mm -hmm. okay um and people a lot of people don't know that but it's been what a long time I feel it's more than eight years eight years it's been way more than eight years, eight years. literally is it more than eight years and we met again we we've got a thing for Costa but we met in Costa in Wood Green I think and nine years ago. it's been like nine years nine years and we got we got um we got forced into some photo shoot for Wood Green shopping center that day <laughs> But that's some competition, isn't it? And you and that's, your still, phone, that's still thing. on the website. It's still on the website. It's still on the website. That's... My face was different. I feel like, oh my gosh, it's been so many years. When I look back, I'm like, oh my god. So yeah, but do you know what? That's the original you that I know. Like that's the yeah, root girl. Yeah, it's so true. And it's, it's one of um. Remember. Yeah, and um, a video that your mum, I think your mum posted on on the gram that time. That was that. I thought this is the and original film. Yeah, I was so embarrassing. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> that was so crazy. Um. Okay, I'm gonna speak about. So when, firstly, your acting. When when did you start doing acting? What what age is it? I would say like 18. So I started doing acting in college so I changed from what I was doing which was like my first year of A level so I finished that and then I realised no like what I really want to do is acting so I changed over um, and I did performing arts and yeah like I started off just doing like little short films here and there little web series extra job like getting experience mm -hmm. and then after that I followed on to acting school and then I went there for a year and it was full time and then after that, so I was like 19, that's when I got my first agent and then I started doing like, you know, different mm. things, adverts here and there and stuff. What made projects. you get into acting? I mean, did you always have a passion for it since a young age? Do you know what? I always had a passion from it since I was little, but I didn't really pursue it when I first moved here because for those that don't know, I was born in Venezuela and I lived there until I was 10. So I moved I there when I was I didn't know that. You see that? I didn't even know that. <laughs> did you wow. think I was born yeah no, i'm no, gonna get no. to know a lot of things today that i probably haven't even known for the last nine years that's crazy yes i was born there literally born yeah. and raised and then yeah like when i moved it, it was hard like anyone that's moved it from a foreign country as well can mm. relate like i didn't speak the language anything and then when i did learn english i sounded like really spanish so i was like a freshie in school do you know what i mean but Your english is so wicked like you would never think 
you wouldn't think it, no. But I was like, I used to sound proper Spanish. Like, wow, it's mad. It's crazy to think because I don't really sound that Spanish. You can hear it a bit here and there, but yeah. not so. Often. And um, so that made me forget about acting for a little bit because I didn't mm. speak the language. I was conscious about my accent as well. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I forgot about it till I was in college, and I was like, Do you know what, I want to do what I want to do. Like, what comes, yeah. what I'm starting now it's not resonating with me and that's what like reminded me again of acting and how much I used to love it you know that's amazing no that's it sounds like a journey and um I feel I mean do, do, so do you think it helps having an agent from because a lot of people ask me yeah that oh, should yeah. I should have an agent or should I does it help do you think it helps I think you need an agent to get you certain auditions to get you certain jobs like for certain series for tv things like that but you can't just have an agent and that's it think like your agent's gonna make your career happen you have to make that happen because sometimes they, they won't be able to get you that much work so you have to be able to find work for yourself as well if you can create work as well and just try to put yourself out there as much as you can so I feel yeah. it's important and do it without you know yeah because I feel people rely on agents a lot you know what you said there yeah you can't, you can't rely on them I learned that like you cannot mm. rely on them yes and I've known a lot of people that's got like um, agents and stuff and they've been out of work for months and months because I think they just sit there wait for their phone to ring but you have to as you know you have you've got the platforms you have to find the work out there do you know what I'm saying you have to and there's different sites as well you've got like mandy.com do you know what I mean different sites mm. you can find work on and you have to be your own agent as well even if you have one and if you don't have one you have mm. to literally do it for yourself so let's talk about the modeling stuff now when did you get into that wow i got into that before acting so i got into that when i was at 16 like i was proper oh, like wow. into i've done a few different bits so i've done like you know i've done a lot of asian bridal modeling i've done a lot of well not a lot but some adverts i used to do like back in the day music videos and like commercial modeling yeah but yeah I think now I do more like commercial stuff more than anything is what I'm, I've been sticking to. But yeah, I started that when I was 16. On and off, I would say. I I mean, for me, I personally think you've got more of a passion doing modelling than acting. And the reason I'm saying that is because... Why? <laughs> Why? I don't, I mean, I've seen you, obviously, um, I've seen you acting stuff, you're amazing, everything, and I know, obviously, you enjoy it, but I feel like your passion this is going by your instagram page and stuff like your your pictures are next next level what you know like fire do you know what i'm saying i think you okay. it's the passion you put in um i don't know it's just i don't know if it's just recent obviously i know due to the lockdown um film industry has gone down a bit and stuff but i don't know i just feel like your passion is more modeling well since the lockdown i have started trying to like make more content for instagram to kind of like push my insta a bit more and stuff because like you said there's not that much acting work so i'm trying to see like what other things i can do to like keep productive that will still mm. benefit or um get me closer to my acting somehow open certain doors or whatever but i do enjoy like you know taking cute mm. pics like putting outfits together and stuff but i don't know i love acting the thing is I love acting so much and I care about it so much that I'm so conscious about it. So I don't yeah. post that many, like acting clips of me and stuff, which I could, like little show real bits and stuff, because I'm like, oh, like, is it that good? Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. I, it, like, I get so conscious about it. With modeling, it's like I just take pics and pose. So I definitely think I care more about acting, but I don't know. I love taking pics as well. What can I say? Um, well, I, well, we know that. I, I know that. And I just, <laughs> who does it? You know what I'm saying? And I just feel, I mean, how long does it, honestly, let a little secret out. How long does it take for you to take them pictures? Is it a long, long day of shoots? Do you know what? It's not that long. Like when I go for pictures, I like to go, I think like a whole hour or mm. half an hour. I think wow. half an hour takes different places and stuff. Um, like I'll pick a location with like a friend and then we'll go take pics but I like to do a few outfits in one day because it's long like getting ready is long doing your makeup getting your hair done it's long so it's better to just get them all out in the, of the way in one day you know but, what yeah. we, we, we think alike I think the same thing because I'm like if you're going to yeah. take pictures and you're going to s- s- plan a day with your friend go out you might as well get different outfits and get it done because no one's got time to do it constantly do you know what I'm saying and 
it's better like see when you've had a productive day you've then got like a lot of material for a while like you've like oh i can post this on this mm. day you can actually schedule it you know if you're making content on different days it's like you run out or it just gets mm. messy man i like to have a schedule no, i, I like haven't that. i like like <laughs> <laughs> i like but, that um mm. let's speak about your um radio show now so obviously that started a few weeks back yeah or a few months back a few months back so it's been like five months now since we've been doing it already oh my god okay Ready. it feels like it's been short it's been nearly six months five six months and whose idea was it i mean how how who how did you get the idea together and stuff do you know what it was rose's idea so she's my co-host in the show yeah. and she literally dm me one day and was like oh you know would you want to be on the radio i'm thinking to do like a like a latin radio show would you want to be involved and stuff and i was like yeah i'm down because literally like those times i always wanted to do something for the latin community but i didn't know what to do and i even thought about okay maybe i can write a short film and have all latinos in it like i thought of so many things but I couldn't get it, even with writing, I'm more like of an actress rather than writer. So I couldn't like, I'll get the ideas and then I'll read them, I like, know it's rubbish, so I never did it. And then, so when she approached me, it was like perfect timing. And then we like, we chose the name together, we developed the idea, the logo, everything, the content we were gonna talk about. Like in the beginning, it was even gonna be three girls, but it's two girls and one guy. So, you know, we just kept going through ideas and yeah. yeah. No, it's amazing. Um, I've seen, um, obviously, I've, I've logged in a few. Say that again, sorry. Have you listened to it, sorry? Yeah, I've logged in a few times and I've seen your stories because um, I follow Rosa as well. And, uh, yeah. Um, I've had Rosa. On, I've, yeah, again, it's one, years and years we've had each other on Instagram. And um, when I saw you lot team up, I'm like, do you know what? This is wicked. This is amazing. Because I see the passion you lot. You know, when you lot put the stories up and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I thought, do you know what? I, I just rate graft, like when people work hard and stuff and you know, it's not easy. It's not, it's tough times now. And you lot are still doing it every week. And I know a few people that have started the radio shows and stuff now. Um, so I'm guessing obviously in the future you'll have guests on and stuff as well, yeah? Yeah, we've had a few guests, not that many. I think we've only had like three, but definitely like as soon as lockdown eases down, we're going to have a lot of guests. Like that's the reason we haven't had any more recent ones because of like the, um, you know, regulations and guides, mm. radio show. But yeah, definitely, we've won a lot of, um, a lot of guests, Latino nice. guests, even like non-Latino guests as well, we're gonna have, you know. Amazing, and this, was it every Sunday, yeah? Every Sunday, 7 to 9 p.m., Tribe Urban Radio, tune in, tune in. I love it, I love it, I like that. Okay, cool. So obviously, I want you, so, a lot of, I've, I've got a lot of um, people on my Instagram similar to you where they're doing so much um mm. we all know you've got a lovely cute little son Aww. okay he's he's <laughs> he's gorgeous and how do you cope with everything how do you it's do it hard. it is hard I'm not gonna lie I think I make it look easy but it's hard like it's really hard yeah, I think the best thing to do is to schedule like plan what you got to do like plan your time and stuff so for example it's like if I need to get some stuff done like create the content like do the research for radio or learn some lines or do a self-tape like I literally wait like when he's sleeping that's when I'll do stuff when I don't have him like if he's with his dad or something I'm doing productive stuff so it's just like planning out what you're doing and also it's so important for me to be like the best mum I can be for him as well so it's like when I'm with him like being present helping him do what he needs to do it's just about like splitting the time and knowing what you've got to focus on I guess in different times for me no, anyway that's, like no, that's amazing yeah no that's amazing because I've seen obviously people that follow you and I've seen your posts like when it's mummy day it's mummy day do you know what I'm saying I've, yeah, I've yeah. seen that you know <laughs> when you're out of the zoo or um, a day out and I, I respect that and I rate that a lot because a lot of people don't have that boundary where they just focus obviously I know work is important but they're just always focusing on work 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 and then the kids are being left you know on the side but with yourself I feel you balance it everything do you know what yeah. I'm saying? um and he doesn't feel neglected and stuff like that which which is a big thing um especially yeah. now in lockdown because he's at home do you know what I'm saying yeah 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 like I'm with him all the time but you're right I mean you make it he's easy nurse, though, which is which is good yeah. he's still open and stuff so that helps me a lot um with you know planning out my free time so luckily I can still do like some stuff 
on some days. I'm glad you said that because, as you said, you do make it look easy, but I know it's not easy. It's okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> like my closest friends, they know how hard it is. Or like when they want to see me, I'm just like, no, I've got my son or I'm doing this. And the little free time I've got, I don't go out. I end up doing something productive. So I literally have hardly any time. I think my social life is affected the most, really. Because it's like when I'm with my son, with my son, when I'm not with him, I'm just trying to grind, trying to get this work. No, and I, I know that of you as well. And like the last couple of years, um, you know, we've, I I've, remember I've, I've invited a few events and you've had to obviously look after little ones. You couldn't come yeah. out or I remember them um, night shifts you used to do, I think in the clubs and stuff as well. You Gosh. know, um, crazy because you see your stories three, four in the morning going home going home and then I get back to my son then he's up for like eight like oh some days some nights I had him like straight after I got in and stuff so crazy okay, but nah, try, I think I just have a lot of um like I want to I have a lot of ambition like I know where I want to get to and I think that's just what drives me so I just you know keep going keep going I was gonna ask you that the next like what keeps you motivated and positive <laughs> It's like how much I want to do, and especially because I'm like, time's going by, I'm getting older, that as well motivates me a lot, like I'm just like, okay, like, you know, by this age I thought I would have this, this and that, and I'm not there yet, so that drives me more to just keep working harder, and yeah, I just want a lot, and I want to be able to give myself and my son the best life as well, like I want him to be able to have whatever he wants, like whatever he needs, so that's also a massive motivation for me. No, that's amazing. I like that. And um, I wanted to tell the people that it is normal to break down because a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know about, you know strongly about mental health and depression and people. And my whole point is as well of getting this message out there is that it's it's not embarrassing to break down. Example, you know, because people want to pitch, people are pitching stuff on Instagram that mm -hmm. they're living a wicked life. There's, you know, nothing going wrong and stuff. But I know, you, you know, everyone has bad days. Everyone has oh. bad days you know, and that's normal. Now on yeah. Instagram, it's a highlight reel, do you know what I mean? So everyone like shows you what they want, they want you to see, they're not going to show themselves being sad, like some people do, but most people don't, they just show you the best side of their life, but it's so normal, honestly, like I have so many days where like I just get frustrated, have a little cry in the car, then keep it moving, like it's so normal, do you know what I mean? Like as long as you you try to get yourself back up and you try to keep your mental health whatever you need like that's all that matters just always keep trying because it's completely normal like it's so normal guys I've been told that times I have bad days but then the next day or next two days is like, oh I'm back that's it do you know what I mean yeah and I'm really glad you said that and um admit because a lot of people I, I, we've all done that and I've done that where if you ever feel down go in your car or go in a corner have a cry let it out you just gotta lay it out like you can't just keep it all bottled in like you're just gonna feel worse it's so normal to get upset it's so normal to cry like what's not normal is just to try not show any emotion you know you're just gonna like become more numb and it's just gonna affect you in the long run so you just gotta let it out no i love that and yeah let it out speak to someone because i think what's happening nowadays andrew is people are just keeping everything in okay mm -hmm. and they're not speaking out and they're just like oh my god i don't want to let my followers down or um, people are going to unfollow me if I start, um, you know, speaking, you know, just putting out certain stuff. And I'm just like, do you know what? Forget people. Like, your mental health is a massive thing, especially in, you know, right now in lockdowns and stuff. Um, it's tough out there. Do you know what I'm saying? It's tough and it's going to be tough. It's going to get tougher um, exactly. and stuff. So I just, you know, it's it's all right to be you. That's what I'm saying, man. Just you know? be you. Honestly, keep it keep it 100 and everyone's going for a lot right now as well like everyone literally everyone's been affected by the covid do you know what i mean so mm. we're not alone in this we've just gotta just keep pushing and just not be like you said not be afraid to be yourself and let it out and feel those those emotions you know you mm. learn from that stuff i guess what's um you've so okay i'm gonna talk about social media a bit because i mean you've you've been you've had social media from probably long long time as well um, yeah from when it first um, launched what are your thoughts on social media now than what it was before I think before it was a bit like more fun like it can still mm. be fun but now I feel like there's a lot of pressure on it if that makes sense like it's become and Massively. I think it's it's harming a lot of people like especially young people's mental health like mm. I feel they just feel so much pressure to like 
you know, have this by a certain age, be doing this, like just be 24 seven productive, things like that. But, you know, it shouldn't be like that. I think it definitely has a negative effect at the moment, like on people. It's massively, yeah, the pressure is mounting because people are just like, um, you know, they'll post something, they won't get enough engagement and they'll be like, is there something wrong with me? Um, and I know people that are glued to their phones, you know what I'm saying? I mean, as you said, it's handy, it's good for work and stuff, but when you need to come off, come off. Yeah, it's literally about like, putting like a timer on yourself you know like don't spend the whole day on social media like just only I've even found myself like just scrolling sometimes but I'm like zoned out and I'm just like what am I doing like yeah. I get up and I'm just there like scrolling scrolling for what reason and I've even felt like you said like insecure as well like if I post something and it doesn't get the amount of likes I thought it would then I feel like ah. Oh, like maybe there's something wrong with me and then you start comparing yourself as well to like other people other nice images you see and you think you yeah. have to look like, it is really toxic, you know? Like, 100%. And I think people, especially, like, I remember when I was suffering depression, I came off. I came off because I noticed it because the first thing people do is they, they, they're seeing people living life and you're just like, I wish that was me. Why isn't that me? Why is why am I feeling like this? Um, I came off and I came off actually about two, three months and it just, it cleared me. It gave me my, it just, I just healed, you know? Have you... Um, have you suffered depression or mental health in the past any time that you've overcome? Definitely. I have, like, when I was younger, I definitely used to suffer from it a lot. Like, when I was in college, there was a time where I was, like, so depressed for mums. Like, it just wouldn't go. And then that also made me want to go towards acting as well. Because, like, with acting, it's a form of expression as well, you know. You can let a lot out through it. And that kind of pushed me to go towards that. But... I think it's something I kind of deal with like from time to time if you know what I mean like there'll be mm. other times where it will come like it'll be triggered for whatever reason but I've just managed to like learn how to overcome it if that makes mm. sense you don't have to get hold of it and basically control it in it now yeah exactly and a lot of people don't know yeah okay um so where do you see yourself future wise um what, what what's your aim and objectives Listen, I want to be, I want to move to LA, like I want to be living in LA. Everyone wants to go to LA. <laughs> yeah, that's like one of my goals, but it's literally my vision. It seems at so you far. Didn't say, did, at least you didn't say Dubai. Dubai, oh yeah, live in Dubai. Everyone, everyone's there right now. Everyone's like living in Dubai. I'm jealous. <laughs> on holiday. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, did you see my rant yesterday, by the way? <sighs> I think so. Yay! Was it about so the... called influencer? Yeah, hey, the influencer. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, of the Dubai. Yeah. You know, riding on camels and sitting by the pool. That's motivating people. Yeah, <laughs> that's making people feel like shit. Like, <laughs> you know, I just don't get as well why people get airtime like that on TV. Honestly, and that's it. Really wound me up because I personally know a lot of NHS people and nurses that are, they, they, um, Andrea, they're doing 15, 18 hour shifts. You know what I'm saying? And they're not seeing their family, they're risking their life every day. But yet you've got people influencing in Dubai, which, you know, I had to rant in the day. Just stay at home, try help out. Like, the situation is not a joke, you know, the numbers keep going up. Like the best thing to do would be to just be responsible and just stay at home. Do you know what I mean? But... I was going to ask you, what are your thoughts on all of this? Um, obviously lockdown, not COVID, but your thoughts on how the government has basically handled everything? Yeah, no, I feel we could have avoided getting to this point. Like I feel like with other countries that took the restrictions more serious earlier on when it first started, like they're okay now. I feel like, you know, here they were just quite chilled and stuff. And yeah, now we're here where we are. And we don't even know like when the lockdown's gonna end. We don't really I mean, have they said anything? They haven't said nothing, but um, I read today that schools ain't going to be opening until March now. Until March? Yeah. And like I after think Easter. after Easter, yeah. Because remember, their, their aim was um, February time, but I think it's going to be March now. So, and I feel because it's reached over 100,000 deaths, I think they feel guilty about it finally. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> which, which annoys me a lot. Um, I was going to ask you a quick question. Um, would you ever see yourself um, acting in soaps? 
I don't think over, you know, realistically, I would love to, but that's another thing that there isn't much Latino roles in the UK, especially in TV, which is one of the main reasons I do want to go to the States because over there you see a Latino in every series, every TV, even if it's not like main, main character, you you see at least one or two. In UK, you don't see a Latino on TV ever. So when that audition eventually does come through for like a soap, then I'll go for it, obviously. But I don't think it's going to come anytime soon. I think probably in the next five years, to be never honest. Never say never. And it's, it's true what you've said, you know. There It'll actually happen. isn't. Yeah. There actually isn't on EastEnders or Coronation Street or nothing. No. That's why I'm well, going to go to I even or even Spain. Like I've got a commercial agent in Spain in Barcelona, but obviously because of the COVID, I haven't been able to go there or get many castings like to go there and stuff. Yeah. But I hope for the future when you know all eases down, I can do some work there as well in Spain. Like I'd love to just work in you know abroad, different countries and stuff. Because there just there there isn't enough here. That's what I feel. Yeah, and it's like, it'll come, but it's got like a few more years till that moment. I want so people that are watching you I think I want people to have the same motivation as you because there's a lot of people obviously due to all of this they've they've literally let themselves go and they're like half of them are giving up I'm like you know what I can't do this no more and yes it's going to be tough now but you know have your ambition and have your goals and stuff and don't give up because the, the reason it's harder here as well Andrew, I think it's because everyone I don't know I mean you must know this everyone nowadays wants to be an actor or uh, um, you know some sort of singer or cele- you know influencer involved in like the creative industry somehow like in one form or another so there's just a lot more yeah I, don't know. Like, um, I think there's a lot of competition now that's what it is <laughs> Yeah. you know um back in the day like I'm, I'm talking back in 2011 2010 you know even before that if you go for an audition you're not going to see as many people in that audition room do you get what i'm saying but now yeah. ugh, now you're... there's so many so many people it's true it is true yeah so I'm, i i think there's room for everyone in one way or another but i feel like yeah let's just I don't know, we need more filmmakers, we need more projects, more things, like more opportunities, really. Yeah, and 100%, I think we need more people that open doors. I mean, um, all these hood films that open doors for everyone, you know, from when it started in kiddohood and I know in the Top Boy Blue Story, I think, I know a lot of companies don't like funding these films, but what it is, these movies, that's what people can relate to and you know, yeah. th- that does well. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, no one wants to see a romantic movie nowadays or, you know, something like that. They want to see hood stuff. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. It's so um, true. It's generational. You know, I know but no romance. Do you know what I mean? No, so, yeah. it, it'd be, I'll be honest with you. Like, you know, I, I know it's, you know, romance and that's there, but I just feel people can relate to more gritty stuff and stuff. And I've seen so much talent on YouTube, Instagram, like all these short films that I've seen, um, um, even some that you've been in as well, you know. Um, what's that last one that you you was in? Um, that you uh, made trust. Part? Yeah, trust. Amazing movie. Amazing, amazing. Oh, Jim's in. It was shot so well. Um, you can tell that um, the storyline was done. And as I said, something like that will be should be a Netflix on Netflix or something. Jim's in. Yeah. Hopefully, you never know. Hopefully, part two and three. I don't know. But. Good the, but I, I get what they're doing. This is where you start off like that and then you, you have to see how it goes. Um, obviously, YouTube is a free platform and stuff. But again, it, it's a viral platform where you can share your work and stuff. And then hopefully other companies can see it and then fund more stuff from that. Do you get what I'm saying? That's what it is. That was part of the idea. The thing is, COVID did like affect the release of everything. Like We wanted to release part two last year, like July last year, but we couldn't get it filming because of COVID. So we ended up filming it like October and now because there's no cinemas open we wanted to have a premiere but we have to wait like it's just delayed the whole process like part two would have been out ages ago you know but it's just everything's just been delayed with it but it's, it's on Amazon so at least that's that's good and it's on YouTube as well hopefully you know so how did you get casted for that one did you have to audition for it? The, the director, he's also the writer and he stars in it, so Kush. Mm. So he plays Aaron, um, he's my my partner in the 
in the film and I just knew him from acting school so I knew him from identity we both went there mm -hmm. and then we both kind of wanted to be in a project together and kind of develop the idea he came up with the idea and then that was it literally got everything together like the funding it. Yeah. everyone make sure you can you can check out trust I think it's on YouTube as well isn't it yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. So if you just type like trust and then MYM, because that's the channel it's on on YouTube, you'll find it straight away. And it's Amazing. got a cliffhanger. So check it out. Actually, it's talking about that. I think it was a massive cliffhanger because I remember messaging you straight away. Like, what's happening in two? Like, <laughs> everyone, everyone messages me about it. They're like, tell me, please tell me what happened. Did you kill her? Who got shot? What happened? Hey. <laughs> I can't tell you like it, you just, it doesn't work like that yeah it doesn't work yeah. like that people need to realize but talking about things being delayed you're 100 percent right I think I know this I mean like the new Top Boy is being filmed right now that got delayed that was meant to be starting last year um yeah. my film the um, LDN the hood film is it's all been um the company's been set up and um, the script's been ready I mean I spoke to you about it ages ago as well um and we're ready to film it. But what it is, um, I had my audition days ready and stuff. But uh, due to COVID and lockdown, it's been delayed because there's a lot of scenes in there, Andrea. There's a lot of scenes in there which I cannot film right now. Um, oh. You know, there's a massive club scene in there, a shootout scene. Um, it's a gritty film. So there's going to be like sex scenes in there. There's going to be fighting scenes in there. So I can't do anything. I can't do nothing right now. That's crazy. I was going to ask how that's going because I remember you've been wanting yeah. to do it and stuff about the COVID. I'm dying to make it like um, the script. I put the script up um, a couple of months back and, you know, I'm, I'm proud because the first film that I've ever wrote and um, everything is ready now. So all the, the locations and all that, that's, you know, all the behind the scenes stuff, it's all sorted. It's just about auditioning and starting the film now and stuff, do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, but as I said, where I've got, all the ideas are there and stuff. So as, as soon as I'm allowed, then um, I can, can. A lot of people, as I said, they want it because they love these gritty films and stuff. And I thought, when it's a long time, like it's just unfortunate. It's all happening. It's all happened now. And I just wish I started it like two years ago, man. That's what I'm saying. It just it's really frustrating because it just feels like, damn, like you're going hard at something, and then it's like everything is just delayed. Everything's on pause, and it's just frustrating because it's like there's not much you can do that like you just have to find like any other way to keep productive sort of thing yeah and I, I've had the company say to me like oh you can start filming it now if you want but I mm -hmm. don't want to do it because it's the fact that um obviously the restrictions and I can't if if I can't do half the scenes in there that I want to do the film's not going to come out the way I want it to come out yeah and you want it to be like you know you want to put your vision out there exactly you can't yeah but the vision for that project you can't sell you have to get it just yeah. right yeah do you know what i just feel it's, it's all about being patient and obviously everything happens for a reason and stuff so when the time comes then mm -hmm. obviously um it will happen and stuff so yeah i'm gonna ask you a set of fun questions oh my god okay what um, is it like with or... yeah it's like random questions um um <sighs> of basically so people get to know a bit more about you and stuff like that yeah, yeah. Okay, they're very random, by the way. So, um, if you had a time machine, mm -hmm. would you go back in time or visit the future? Oh, how long though? Like, for how long would you visit each one? Uh, for a day. For a day. I and think, you can't take uh, your phone and all of that. It's just basically you. Just seeing it for a day. I think I'll go to the future for a day. You know, because the you? past. Yeah, because the past, I'm just like, okay, maybe if I want to, like, relive a certain day that was amazing, just relive that whole thing, then maybe. But I feel like I remember everything from the past. But if I go to the future I can get and I get a taste of it, I can mm. kind of, like, you know, see, oh, I'm going to get it. Or, damn, that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll be scared about the future, though. So, I don't know, man. It's I just... Just something you don't like, isn't it? And you're like, yeah. Whoa. Like, you know, I'm not being bad, but like you could be dead or something. And you just like, hold it. you know, you just know the future's scary. Look at the world now. But I just feel like I would want to go back to one of the Asian times and just see how it was back then for a day. Okay. You know, um, yeah. okay. Would you rather have a home? I mean, this is going to be a bit simple, but would you rather have a home on a beach or in the mountains? Oh, on the beach. Beach, you know, yeah, because mountains are cold. <laughs> 
nice, yeah, but listen, I like to sunbathe, I like to go in the sea and just swim, like definitely by the beach, 110%. We have the bikini pics every day, boy. <laughs> Ah, uh, listen, bikini pics every day. I'll be out there making content. In I love cute it. Places. Um, what was your favorite game as a child? Ooh. It could be computer games or board games. I think um, Crash, Crash Bandicoot on PlayStation. Mm. That I what I feel that one also Mario Mario sixty four. I used to oh play a lot. Yeah, yeah, and Game Boy. I don't um, know if you ever had Game Boy. I didn't, you know, I just had like I'm um, Nintendo 64, GameCube, and yeah, Luigi's Mansion on GameCube. Oh, that was so sick. I used to get scared of the ghosts. Zelda used to freaking scare me. I was scared of Zelda, you know. I think it was the music, the little music of the spiders used to come out. It was so scary. <laughs> I love it. Um, what food do you crave most often? I love Venezuelan food. Like, it's one of my faves, but I love Caribbean food as well. Like, I get cravings of, like, Caribbean food all the time. Some mac and cheese, some dumplings. But I'm vegan now, so, you know, Are I you? only... Yeah, 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 I'm vegan. I've been vegan for, like, three three months, two months, two months. So no chicken and rice for you, no more, or Nando's? What? Rice? Yeah, but no chicken. I mean, chicken, yeah, no chicken. chicken <laughs> yeah, 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 no chicken rice, yeah, but no chicken, meat. I never like fish, so no fish. Wow, Mad. I like it that. Was by, I like that. Yeah, like I was doing a detox for a month, so I cut out so many things. I was only eating like vegetables, and then after the first month that I started eating carbs again, I just didn't crave meat anymore. Like I don't look at it the same, so I just don't have it. But my do you plan think, was never. Mm. Do you think you've lost a lot of weight by dropping meat? Yeah, I did. Now I've kind of gained it because um, I've been eating a lot of carbs. But when I was doing only like eating only vegetable and like alkaline foods, I lost a lot. But that's because I wasn't eating carbs as well. So it was both mm. no meat and carbs. So I lost weight like this, like wow. really, really quick. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people are turning vegan. That's what they, they've got vegan stuff going, selling everywhere now as well. That's the thing. Go find it anywhere you go, you can get a vegan option, which is really good, and it makes it a lot easier as well yeah yeah definitely definitely um if you could visit one place on earth right now where would you go oh i would that's hard i have a few like you can only choose one <laughs> i'll go to thailand right now i'll go to thailand thailand yeah okay i like that good choice animals exotic animals sunshine you like your exo exotic stuff in it i like that yeah yeah definitely i love tropical places like with a lot of jungles and different animals and stuff yeah i would see i would go to um i would want to go to a tropical island for a day do you know what i'm saying just random yeah um, that would be perfect it's a perfect day in it? Just going. um just for the day though yeah i'll come back the next day man <laughs> Oh yeah, same. I'll go for like a whole week, a whole <laughs> week. <laughs> if you could own any free cars, what would they be? I'll have a Lamborghini for sure. Um, a Range Rover to get around in the city. And those two what? were my choices as well, you know. Is it? Yeah. I'm. What else? You said free, didn't you? Yeah. So I need one. I think the one. Um, a Bentley. That's a good choice. Good choice. They were really nice cars. I like that. What makes you the angriest? Do you know what? I'm really chill. Like, I never get angry. This is one thing about me. I hardly ever get angry. I don't know. I mean, for I me, it's liars. I don't like liars. You don't like liars? Nah. Um, Loyalty is a massive thing. I don't like liars either. Yeah, they get me a bit angry. It's like, just be honest. I like mm. to just keep honest. But I'm thinking, what else don't I like? I think when... No, 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 I'm not going to say that one. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> You can't do that. You can't start something up and not finish it. <laughs> no, because it's a bit... Oh, basically, okay, you know when, like, you're first chatting to someone, yeah? Yeah. And they just come across way too strong, way too clingy. <laughs> On the first time you speak, I don't like that. And it angers me. I get, like... <sighs> 
cool down, relax. Yeah, I'm very chill in it, so you have to be chill. Everything's got to be chill. I could, and now you said that, I can imagine the amount of clingy people on you, like it's just on the first time chatting to you. Yeah, and if I don't like it, I like just. I like mystery, you know, so just keep it chill, be like mystery, let me figure it out. If it's all too much in my face, it's like, I don't yeah. know, I mean, basically. I like that, okay. What always brings a smile to your face? Oh, my son. I knew you were going to say that. I knew, <laughs> yeah, I knew that's like literally the, the one thing, the one person that just always lights up my face, just smiling. I no matter it. the mood, get that smile out. Which is more important to you, truth or happiness? Happiness. Happiness. Hmm. Mine, see, I think mine will be truth. Truth. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to know everything, listen, like, you have to be ready to... Handle it. Sometimes truth hurts. This is the thing. And I feel like life is short. So for me, just happiness, man. <laughs> if I wanted to know the truth about everything, I would be... I don't know, some things... It may sound stupid, but for me some things is better if you don't know and that's only because i've found out like ugly truths in the past like about mm. different things and i feel like sometimes when you don't know you're just happier and i love feeling happy so i just prioritize you know, you're right there you know because i think some people can't handle truths and it can mess yeah. with your head yeah yeah and something small that was just a lie or whatever it can just stay with you for ages and affect your happiness for so long but like if you just focus on you do you be honest it's all right some strong words of wisdom from you I love <laughs> it um would you rather be rich or famous definitely rich rich yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like, a lot of people would choose famous you know but is it like rich and famous or just famous just famous just like, no. you, know, you, you know like you, you got a lot of famous people out there that's not really rich but they must have some money because they they're famous. Do you know? You be you be surprised. <laughs> you... No, definitely rich. Definitely rich. <laughs> yeah, I think I think rich because that will give you safety for your future and exactly. your family and stuff. You can do what you want. You know exactly. If you fly there. Really. Yeah. If you were a superhero, what powers would you have? I would like to be able to teleport. Well, wow. <laughs> yeah, that way you have more time, you see. Like, yeah. you just teleport from one place to another. Oh, I want to be on the beach today. Boop, you're there. Like, yeah. oh, I need to get to work. You're there. I would love to be able to teleport. I like that. What about x-ray vision? That's me, man. X-ray vision? Yeah. See bones and organs. No, like, as in, you can see where the gold is hidden. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bones and organs, okay. I love it. I love it. Yeah, like true vision. <laughs> to be fair, okay. yeah, that can come handy because then you can see that who's got who's 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 sick and stuff as well. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's because you can just heal them. Like, like, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 mad, but yeah, I know some people some people choose flying and stuff, obviously. Um, yeah, that's but... fun. I'm scared of heights, though. Are you? Like, I like looking at, um, I think I've only realised recently that I am. Like, for many years, I was like, no, I don't have any fears, I don't have any phobias. But to be honest, when I'm on a plane and stuff, I don't like looking down. <laughs> like, I look down and stuff, but it makes me feel really uncomfortable. If I'm in a really high building, I, I look down and stuff, yeah. but it makes me feel uncomfortable. So if I was flying, I don't yeah. think I would like, I would never do skydiving. No way. It's, that looks fun, though. It looks fun. No, I used to want to do it when I was like 17, but yeah. that was like, I, lo I lost that chance for it. Now, no way. You'd have to force me. Like, there's not enough wow. money. Well, yeah, there's obviously enough money you could pay me to do it, but <laughs> I have to. Okay, this is a tricky one. Mm -hmm. you, are you are walking to work, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um basically it's it's a job that you desperately need you need the money it's really important to you so you're walking to work you see a dog drowning in the canal okay um your boss has told you that if you are late just this one time you're fired you're gone do you save no. the dog or do you go work 
<laughs> listen, I would I would try to save the dog and tell my boss, listen, this is what happened. Like this shit doesn't happen every day. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. It happened today. And that is it. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Just walking past a drowning dog, like bye. No, no, no. I'd feel horrible. But can I'll you imagine, Andrea, you go to work and you, 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 he's like, why are you late again? What did I tell you? You're like, well, I was saving a dog. They're not going to believe you. <laughs> Listen, I, they'll have to believe. I'll do something for like, you know, once I rescue the dog, I don't know, take a pic, look, the dog was drowning. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I wouldn't just walk past. Could you imagine? I'll buy a dog. You can drown. Like, yeah, I don't think you can I, live with yourself, and it's it's one of them ones. Yeah, I'll feel like shit. Like I'll be walking, thinking the dog, the dog, the dog. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Okay. Um. Lastly, if you were an animal, what would you be and why? Oh, that's a hard one. I think I would be. Mm, I don't know. Maybe a sloth. Okay. They go on the trees. <laughs> So <laughs> random. I love it. I love it. I love it. So random. I'll be a cat. Can you just eat and sleep? You just eat and sleep. Cats, yeah. cats are so lazy, man. Oh. Say that again. They're really independent cats. Yeah. They just do the thing. They they get spoiled. They're just eating, they're sleeping, and they, they've got no stress in life. I, do you know what? I'd want to be a bird, actually. How come? I know I said I wouldn't like flying, but I think if I was a bird, I would like flying. You're just free. Do you know what I mean? And as a bird, you wouldn't be scared of heights. So I think I enjoy it, being a bird. True, true. And you can just be visiting places just like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. Amazing. All right. Well, that's it for the questions. But um, I just want to thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. No. It's nearly been an hour already. Is it? Now, thank you for bringing me on. Like, it was such a good catch up as well. We haven't been able to see each other for long and it was good just to chat, have a chat about things at the moment, the situation, the industry, everything. Definitely. Where where can people follow you on, on social um, media? You my Instagram at I am Andrea Martinez. And that's it. It's just Instagram I've got, really. So you're not really on the Snapchat and the Twitter and all that, are you? No, I had Snapchat, but I don't use it anymore. I'm going to make a TikTok soon, only because you know, make some content and stuff. But at the moment, I, it's just Instagram. Instagram's taken over. I feel everyone's telling me to come on TikTok and I just feel, no, man, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I think I'm rubbish at it. Like, I've tried to do it and I just don't, I'm not that good at it, but I feel like, especially with the COVID and how things are going at the moment, I'm just going to do it. Have a day, make content, just post it, just to keep productive, really.